parked outside a really wonderful guest house, and this whole street is basically all hostels. They call so, it Gringo Alley. They call it Gringoville because it's definitely a lot more gringos than locals. So it's been fun. We've had a great time here in Medellin, but I think uh, it's time to go exploring. You guys probably haven't seen this, but I found the mothership oh. of butter cookies. It's like the biggest one they make. It's the biggest one they make, and we got it a couple days ago, and it's already mostly gone. Trent is a sucker for butter cookies. It's kind of a weird thing to be a sucker for, but... Uh-uh. There's a lot of people who love butter cookies. It's a very grandpa-ish thing to me, personally, but Trent just embraces that. Allie loves these cookies and she tries to eat them all the whoa, time. Whoa, whoa. She just likes to talk crap, so don't let her don't <laughs> let her fake it. Even give, give me some butter cookie comments. They're not that bad. I'll give him that. Yeah. How are you? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, nice to meet you. It's really cool. Well done. <laughs> ciao, ciao. ciao. decided to leave the downtown area of Medellin to go explore some of the outskirts of the city. We've heard some amazing things about the surrounding areas and we're driving out of the city in an endless tunnel. Literally through an entire mountain that continues forever. It's crazy because every so often there's these big green doors which are like emergency escapes which I guess maybe are staircases up to the top. I don't know but like every quarter mile or something there's those little emergency escapes we are deep in this tunnel though it's cool there's not a lot of tunnels in Utah there's a few but they're not like this I don't like tunnels <laughs> at least if we get stuck we have the van we could live for a little while we got some food we got some water electricity yeah. we don't have oxygen if the van gets camped in though that's true Twenty minutes later, just a quick update, we're still in the tunnel. This is insane. It's a little weird because we've been in here for a really long time, and every so often you pass a big fan, but they're not on, and we can smell exhaust really bad. So I wonder how they control like the air circulation in here, because this goes on forever. I feel like I can see daylight up here as we're going around this corner, but I think it's just people's headlights coming the other direction, reflecting off the cars. Funny if it just pops out and goes right back into another tunnel. Oh, don't even joke about that. <laughs> The tunnel that we just drove through is the Tunnel de Oriente. It is a tunnel that connects the Rio Negro Valley to Medellin. They just barely inaugurated it on August 15th, so it's only like six weeks old. It's 8.2 kilometers long, like almost five miles, like 4.9 miles. It's insane. Well, one thing I've noticed is that driving in a lot of these Central and South American countries is that the roads tend to have more debris. They tend to have more uh, nails and screws and things like that. So there's a big nail in our back right tire and we need to get it fixed. That tire's 20 pounds low. Hopefully these guys can uh, repair a tire. Montayantas. He was awesome. He took care of us right away. He charged us 10,000 pesos, which sounds high, but it's... Uh, like $2.60. Wow. So I gave him 15,000 pesos, rounded it off to an even five bucks-ish. I think it's still less than five bucks. May as well top off on gas while we're here, and then we gotta hit that road, baby.
made it to this cute little town called Guatape. It's about two hours outside of Medellin. We're up in the mountains and we're trying to actually get to Pablo Escobar's house. He invited us over for the afternoon, thought it'd be a good time, uh, but the road is not paved. So we're not actually sure if we can make it. We're actually not even sure if this house that we're trying to get to is still open. For the first time ever, I voted that we take the motorcycle even though I'm kind of scared of sitting on the back of the motorcycle while Trent drives it, but Trent wants to take the car. So we're on this road, it's not paved, it's pretty steep, and we're in the van trying to see how far we can make it. Well, we didn't actually get the camera out and film, but we came to a gate that said private property, and there was a man inside it, so we called him over to try and talk to him, and he owns the land that leads up to La Manuela Hacienda, and he said, no, es cerrado, es no ingresar, which means you cannot enter, there's no going to La Hacienda. So I guess we're just going to have to take you guys by drone. So this is actually a really cool house of Pablo Escobar's. This was his favorite vacation home. This house actually played a huge role in his capture. This house was actually packed full of dynamite in one of the bathrooms by one of the other local cartels. Actually packed the bathroom full of dynamite, blew the house apart, and that actually exposed a lot of the cash and a lot of the drugs that Pablo Escobar was hiding in this mansion. This allowed the authorities to get some dirt on him. Three to maybe eight months later, the authorities actually tracked down Pablo Escobar and that was when they killed him. So this house played a huge role in that. They never repaired it, so it's actually blown to pieces, but it was an incredible mansion that was set out here on the lake as his favorite vacation home. Okay, so we weren't able to get into Pablo Escobar's house. We decided enough with the narcos. Let's go do something fun and outside. We're here at The Rock. That's all it's called. The Rock. It should be called The Taurus Trap because it is insane. There's so many people here. And we're going to go try and find a place to park, but our van is freaking enormous. And I don't think people know how big and long our van is. They let us pay to come in here but I don't think there's a single parking spot back here that's gonna take our van. Parking was a nightmare, but we finally figured it out. <laughs> we're here, we made it. Now we're about to climb the Peñol. El Peñol is the name of this town. This is just the rock of El Peñol. Oh, Peñol is the town, yeah. and this is just the rock. La Piedra. Piedra. La Piedra de Peñol. De... That's a tongue twister. <laughs> La Piedra de Peñol. Peñol. Yeah. I tried. <laughs> Yeah? Hi, hi, hi YouTube! <laughs> hi! Subscribe, okay? Yeah! Yeah! yeah. Yes. Okay. Bye, guys! Trent Nelly! Trent Nelly! Yes. Yes. <laughs> YouTube! <laughs> Let's try to focus on doing two stairs at a time. I'm trying to make this into a workout. <laughs> yeah, we need to get a workout in today. Oh, boy! We made it, like 710 stairs maybe. <sighs> a little bit of a workout, I'm definitely sweating. It's crazy because we've hiked so many Mayan ruins and all those stairs are enormous so they like really work out your legs <laughs> yeah. and your butt, but they're not like that tall. So after like 20 or 30 seconds, you're done. This was like a solid, solid 20 minutes of non-stop walking. Yeah, I'm, it's good. I'm soaking wet with sweat. Yeah. Well, looks like we're done, we're at the top, but it looks like there used to be more. Or it used to be more. There's a staircase with a gate, and you can see where the top is broken off. Wouldn't have wanted to be on there when it broke. No, bueno. It's, it's, oh my gosh. No, no, it's definitely trash. No! Oh yeah, it's like totally broken. It like landed on the camera and like broke the gimbal. 
the whole case was like popped apart. I like kind of clicked it back together, but. Why did it crash? Did it give you a warning? It just said aircraft disconnected. We're about to take it off right here in the parking lot. It was about 20 feet in the air. 30 feet? I didn't see it. Yeah, maybe like 20, 25 feet. And just all of a sudden it just crashed. There was nothing around it, no power lines, no cars. I just heard a huge crash and this friendly parking attendant picks it up and runs it over to us as if Trent could save it, but. It's really broken. This is the price we pay for flying the drone. Every time we fly it, we know there's this risk, but it still hurts pretty bad when you're flying it in a safe place. There was nothing that caused it. The battery was fully charged. And now it's gone. Pretty frustrating. Drone number two that's been uh, taken out on this journey. Hopefully we can get a replacement sometime soon because drones are a big part of our videos. Yeah. <laughs> That's upsetting, but honestly, it could have been a lot worse. Could have hit a person, could have hit a car. Luckily, it just landed in the middle of the parking lot um, and there was nothing around it. But we fly the drone pretty much every single day. Trent's a great drone pilot. I have no idea why that happened. It definitely wasn't, it didn't run into anything. It was just flying and then it said aircraft disconnected. And when I looked up, there was a guy holding the drone and it looked like it was broken. And I was like, what just happened? And he ran it over here. And sure enough, the gimbal's broken. The lens is broke. The camera's completely destroyed. It hit the ground hard. Yeah. So like, I think it was flying, the aircraft disconnected, whatever happened, it lost power completely. And I think it just fell like a brick onto the ground and probably camera first. It's really weird because even if it loses signal or something happens, it'll try to just land itself. Uh, but this didn't even try to land itself. It literally lost all power and just fell out of the sky, which is very disconcerting. Huh. It's a maraca now. Try to look for the silver lining. At least we still have this equipment. I can use extra propellers and maybe I could sell it for parts. I don't know. It is a hefty price, we gotta buy a new one now. Piedra de Peñol was really cool. Didn't end exactly the way we expected it to, but we're hungry, we're tired. We're gonna turn this day around. We're gonna take a deep breath, pick you guys up at some food. Is there a place with sun all year round? And pina coladas with pretty faces and sand on the ground. I want to stop this ongoing train before I lose my mind and go insane. I don't want to sleep every night. I want a lot of spark in the dark. I, don't I just really see. am having trouble shaking the thought of our drone crashing. It's I like, know. it's really got me feeling sad because obviously we need the drone, but really I'm like so thankful that the drone crashed where there was no people, there was no cars. One, it was close to us and we were able to recover it. I'm really thankful that it landed where it did, when it did, but I am really sad that there's not gonna be any drone footage in the videos for a little while. It's fine, we're okay, we're healthy, nobody got hurt. We had some delicious, delicious food. We haven't had vegan in a long time and that was delicious. Yeah, that was really good. And uh, stop raining. What is there to complain about? Let's head back to the van. We made our way to a hostel slash finca that's uh, in the mountains here in Guatape and it is uh, pouring rain like crazy. Insane thunder, lightning storms. And we're just kind of chilling in the van. You a good boy? Yeah, yeah, it's a good boy. Now he's back here just slaving away, huh? We want to thank you guys so much for watching this adventure. If you guys enjoyed it, show us by clicking the like button. Subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. Thank you guys. We appreciate you. We love you. And we'll talk to you soon. See you on the next one. Good night. I don't want to sleep every night. I want
want a light a spark in the dark I don't want to say I'm okay Living the same every day Come run beside me, let's take our